Hello everyone, I'm Christopher Tan and welcome to Providence Money Wisdom, an original podcast inspired by my book Money Wisdom, Simple Truths for Financial Wellness. In this podcast, I'll be sharing simple financial truths to guide you in navigating through the minefields of misinformation and false promises in order to achieve financial security and peace of mind. Hello everyone, thank you for listening to this podcast. And to all fathers, a very happy Father's Day. It's never easy to be a good father. So have a good celebration today and I wish you a very meaningful time with your family. Making money from death. Some time ago, one of our clients called us to say that someone has introduced him to invest in verticals and life settlements. It was promoted to him as a low risk and high return instrument and asked us whether these instruments are really so good. Obviously, there is no free lunch. So, what is the catch? First of all, what are verticals and life settlements? Let's say someone is diagnosed with a terminal illness such as cancer or AIDS and does not have sufficient money for treatment or to keep himself happy till he dies. But he has a life insurance policy that pays only upon death. He can sell his policy to a vertical settlement company at a value higher than his cash values who in turn packages all these policies and resell it to investors like you. The terminally ill gets money to do what he wants and the investors assume payment of the premiums and ultimately receives the death benefit. So where's the risk, you may say? Well, the risk lies in the fact that advanced medical technology may prolong the life of the sick and outlive the doctor's prognosis. Such was the case with AIDS patients who the Vertical Settlement Company first targeted in the 1980s. Medical advancement prolonged their lives and many went into remission and are still very much alive today. A happy situation for them, but not for you as you have yet to realize your investment gains. So, investors became unwilling to take in anything except the very worst cases. In the end, the market that was first designed for them became very small. This was when a lot of fraud started to happen in the vertical market. Many vertical fraudsters began collecting money and never even invested in policies. It doesn't help when this market was not well regulated at the time. In the midst of all these came the life settlement product. While vertical settlements involve terminally ill patients, those whose life expectancies of no more than a year or two, life settlements involve policy owners with longer life expectancies, generally between 2 and 13 years. These are the people who are usually above the age of 65 years old and need to have a significant decline in health since the policy was first purchased. As an investor, your return on investment comes when they die and you receive the death benefit similar to that of the vertical. So, what is wrong with these products? It is interesting how salespeople can work their sales pitch depending on what products they are pushing at that point in time. This is what a typical sales line would be and I quote, It is a low risk high return instrument and you are really helping the terminally ill and the dying to have money before they pass on." Sounds really good and noble, but maybe too good to be true? As a start, if someone is really interested in helping the terminally ill and the dying, maybe they shouldn't charge so high a commission in selling the product? Agents' commissions alone can be anything between 10 and 20% and we have not yet considered what verticals and life settlements company earn. From the insured perspective, is it really the best financial decisions to sell their policies? Obviously, keeping the policy till their demise will provide the best return on investments for the demise estate. Otherwise, investors wouldn't be interested to buy them in the first place. There are many ways to raise cash when one is about to pass on and especially so when you have huge death benefits and beneficiaries to the policy. 
Now, time constraints in this episode does not allow me to list them all down, but suffice to say, selling away a life insurance policy that is about to mature may not be the best option. Contrary to what is being preached by financial salespeople, verticals and life settlements present huge investment risks. It has to be since it is touted to give high double digits returns. Some of these risks are life extension risks, that means the insured living beyond their life expectancy, exchange rate risk, and that comes if the product is an offshore product, legal risk, and that is your risk of having no legal recourse if it is not properly regulated, and also fraud, verticals and life settlements companies, mishandling of monies, and the insured misrepresenting their real health condition. As a wealth advisor, we have been approached many times by companies to recommend verticals and life settlements products to our clients. Besides not being too happy with the high cost structure and the high incidence of fraud in this industry, what we are particularly uncomfortable with is the ethical issues surrounding these products. As an investor, the only time you reap the return of your investment is when people die. The earlier they die, the higher your returns and the happier you are. When advanced medical technology lengthens the life of the terminally ill and dying, they and their loved ones are happy, but you are upset because they don't die soon enough for you to maximize your returns. We do not think that we and our family of clients would like to invest in a scheme that rejoices over the death of others. So, should you invest in verticals and life settlements? Ask yourself these questions. Firstly, do you need to take the risk associated with these products? Secondly, can you take the risk of losing your investments? Thirdly, can you accept the fact that your investment returns depend on how fast someone dies? And last but not least, are you willing to take the risk so that you can get higher returns? If you need not and cannot affirmatively answer the above questions, even if you are willing to turn a blind eye to the ethical considerations of these products, you should not invest in them. Thank you for tuning in to Providence Money Wisdom. I will be back soon with the next episode. For more information on my book or Providence services, kindly visit Provident.com. I'll see you the next time. All analysis, views or opinions from interviews, recommendations and other information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein are provided for general information purposes only. Information expressed does not take into account any specific situation, particular needs or objectives and should not be construed as specific advice or a recommendation. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal or tax professional before taking any action. Provident Limited does not accept any liability for any loss whatsoever arising from any use of the information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein. All contents and information contained herein may not be copied or reproduced in whole or in part by any means without prior written consent of Provident Limited.